everybody and welcome, welcome to Let's Play Motorsport Manager. Yes, a new series is upon us, it's always nice doing something new. Um, of course this is one of three new LPs, so if you don't like this game or you're not you interested in this game, fear not. Total War's coming, Pills of Eternity is coming. But for now, this is replacing Football Manager, simulation manager based game. Another simulation manager based game. And I've been playing this game for the past two months and I really, really love it. So I thought, if I'm enjoying it that much, might as well share it with some other people that might also enjoy it as well. Right, this session is going to serve to, well, it's an introductory session to the series. There's going to be no racing at all. So if you're just interested in jumping into the, uh, into the racing itself, this might not be the video for you. However, this introductory video is going to serve two purposes. It's going to provide a very quick whistle-stop tour of the game for those people that might be watching that haven't seen this game before and are kind of intrigued as to what it's about. But also it's going to provide people that do know about the game with the status of my team. Because this is my third season. Not the first season. I've done two seasons off camera. Didn't intend to LP this game at all. But I changed my mind and therefore we're picking this up at the third season kind of pivotal and I'll go through the widers in a second so this is a two a dual purpose introductory video so bear with me I'll try and keep it to less than 15 minutes because I'm going to be talking talking and talking so uh, yeah right then so here is the team it's the Phoenix Knights racing team as I said didn't intend to LP this. Might have picked a slightly different name if I realised I was going to record the sessions. But uh, it's named after my favourite sitcom of all time, Peter Kay's Felix Knights. Absolutely love that comedy show. And uh, the team principal is none other than Brian Potter himself. <laughs> Wheelchair and all. Good old Brian. He's now managing a uh, not a not a club in uh, in Lancashire, but uh, a racing team. And in Ode to the name of the team Phoenix Knights like a phoenix rising through the flames from the ashes the car is colour coordinated to represent fire orange yellow and red just like a phoenix we will be aiming to rise from the ashes of the lower echelons of the third tier of the racing series to the upper echelons of the world motorsport championship aka formula one Right, so that's a very quick introductory introduction to the team itself. As you can see from the stats here, this is an overview page, uh, we have the 7th best car, the best drivers on the grid, we have the 2nd best headquarters, 3rd best staff, and best sponsors. Not bad for only two seasons. This is, our now, this is now our third season. Not bad at all. Right then, so what I'm going to do is just go through all of the various tabs, explaining different things along the way, and uh, see where we are after all of that. So, there's a mail system. You get a lot of messages and things. More about that when they crop up, I suppose. But this is the car. This is the beauty. I mean, I love the livery. I just love it. Bright orange, it stands out in the race. Eye-catching. It's gonna be one that many people remember for years to come, due to our success, hopefully. So this is the car itself. Now. When I started the season, or the series, oh, I had played the game for a couple of months, picked up some tips from various other LPs and doing some reading and having a bit of a practice myself, and then I jumped into this Phoenix Knight save, and this was going to be my number one save, putting into practice everything I'd learned. And I decided that I was going to get promoted in the third season, or make a push for promotion in the third season. And I decided I was going to do that by developing my car aggressively using risky parts, illegal parts, to give us the best performance boost, the best chance to have the, the best parts possible for the third season. And as a result of that, we have a very good engine, fourth best engine, sixth best suspension, um, eighth best brakes and gearbox, a little bit lacking there giving us the seventh best car overall. But it's going to be very close in the midfield, I think. So aggressive development in terms of spending, in terms of developing the parts, because we, we couldn't use the parts on the current seasons we were, on, we were in because they were risky, they were illegal. So we were purely focusing on the future. 
For the car itself, you design new parts. More about that when it occurs. You fit the parts to your cars. Okay. And then you've got to improve your parts during the season. So you improve either the performance levels or the reliability, or both. You've got to improve the reliability. The car starts out with the parts start out with a you know 40-50% reliability. Reliability wears down in the race, leading to potential failures. So you've got to increase the reliability and increase the performance. And more about that when it occurs during uh, the proper um, you know the proper sessions but as that is the premise of the car you either design your parts for it you fit the parts to the car and then you develop the car in season through improving its performance and its reliability with your staff here is the chassis this is paid for and developed pre-season this doesn't change during the season unless certain um, you know little incidents crop up that you've got to take a decision on so for a third season, this is actually not a bad car and especially given our drivers, one that we might have a real good chance of getting promotion with this season. So next tab is the headquarters tab. This is where we build our headquarters. Now various different buildings do various different things. They improve the, the, the development of your car parts, they improve your uh, driver's stats over time. There's a whole host of different things. The most important thing really is we have, in the first two seasons, upgraded our design centre, our factory, giving us more staff for our part developments and extra improvement slots, scouting facility so that we can scout more drivers, very useful, and a helipad which unlocks five star sponsors, more about that in a second. So there's the buildings that I have built so far. In order to bridge the gap for our weaker parts, all of these parts have been developed with no buildings present that improve your part design. To bridge the gap for these two, because our designer obviously can't design these things very well, we are going to uh, this season focus on building the telemetry centre to give us um, better components for our gearbox and after that we are going to focus on the brakes R&D to give us great brake components so getting the higher quality brake components will hopefully allow us to develop much better brakes and gearbox to bridge that gap that performance gap so that is the the building work side of things it's very it's very expensive and therefore you've got to really plan for what buildings you want um, you may build one or two uh, a season but that's it so there's not really much to, to talk about here the team overview we've seen that on the home page right then so we'll move to drivers we'll move to drivers um, the plan as I said was to get promoted in the third season that was my th I had a th you know the three season goal the first aspect of that was to develop a really good car. But then the second aspect, and third aspect if you will, good staff, good drivers. Not too shabby if you, as you can see. We got Sergio Valdez at the back end of the first season. And we got Iris Sundin at the end of the second season. So I'm very happy with both these. I'll take you through Iris first. I mean, look at these stats. Absolutely flipping glorious. Now, there's no way she would come to our team as a four-star driver with these stats. But when we did spy her, when we did scout her out, she had a bit of an eye problem, which reduced her stats to three and a half star. And therefore, when her eye problem cleared up, with some eye drops, no doubt. Um, she went back up to four star, and hence we snapped her up for a bargain. Not only that, because she was slightly lower quality in terms of her star rating, we could also snap her up for a not too expensive £565,000 per race. I've seen three and a half star drivers charging £850,000 per race. She's not a pay driver, but she's relatively cheap for what you're getting here. And you're getting some class. Marketability at 77%, 
the more marketable your driver, the better sponsorships you can get. So it's very good to have a driver with high marketability as well as good driving stats. She ticks both boxes. She is going to be the superstar of this season, I think. Iris Sundin. Sergio Valdez. Good old Sergio Valdez. He's got 100% marketability, not quite as good as Iris, but he does have potential as well to get up to a four star. He's very young, he's 22. I mean, these stats aren't too bad. But he's a bit of a diva. Maybe that's why he's such a marketable chap. The press love him because he's selfish, he's spoiled, he hates team orders, he causes controversy. But that's what the media like. And that's why I got him. <laughs> Because he's got potential, he's pretty decent, and he had such a good marketability. So he's a bit of a diva, this lad. We'll see how that plays out during the rest of the season. There's some RP potential here, I'm sure. And he's costing a foul, 495,000 per race. So that's the drivers. There's something else about Valdez that I'll tell you about very shortly. So in terms of the staff then, we've got our lead designer responsible for designing the car parts. Three star, not too bad. We don't develop wings in this season. This series doesn't develop wings. So therefore these are not so important. But uh, he's not too shabby at all, you know, as an all-rounder for this for this level. For this uh, for this series, European racing series. So uh, yeah. That's uh, our lead designer. Our race mechanics, also not too bad. Now, in terms of what they do, the race mechanics, race mechanics develop or improve your car performance and improve your car reliability between races. So therefore, reliability and performance stats are important, but they're also responsible for your pit stops. So concentration, the higher the concentration, it reduces the risk of errors occurring, mistakes occurring during the pits and mistakes can cost you up to 10 seconds in the pits. That's a massive chunk of time. So concentration is pretty important to have that as high as possible to reduce those errors from happening in the pit stops. So concentration for me important. Part fixes, not so important because you don't really fix your parts that often in a race. So that for me is a bit of a dump stat in terms of an RPG term. Uh, chemistry also not massively important in my opinion. Pit stops increases or rather decreases the overall time of your pit stops. So high concentration, high pit stops, and then either high reliability or high performance. Just the one. And that is the three stats that I'm interested in. The other two are dump stats. So if you get these two you know pretty low it actually takes your overall quality of your mechanic down which decreases his overall cost so i'm getting a nice little bargain here eve harding the second race mechanic even better 20 concentration mistakes non-existent pit stops 19 like clockwork dump stat dump stat Performance, 18, marvellous. So yeah, so one race mechanic, good at performance, and one race mechanic, good at reliability. Again, just to keep the overall cost down. Having a mechanic with high stats in everything, they're going to ask for ludicrous amounts of money. They're going to be very high star rating, and then you're just not going to get them in the third series. So, uh, yeah, I'm more than happy with my staff members. Scouting is where you find your drivers, where you find your designers, where you find your mechanics. I found mine, and therefore... I'm not going to go through this right now. Finances is where you can see how much money you are losing, in our case, per race, so that you can plan for your purchases of buildings and um, you know parts. And you can set the budget for next season's chassis. We are not putting a lot of money aside for our chassis next season because I still believe that it's more important for us to continue our aggressive development of car parts. I think our car part development is more important than splashing money on a good chassis. No point of having a good chassis with crappy parts. Just look at McLaren, for instance, in real life. They've got a not too shabby chassis, but their engine is rubbish. <laughs> so therefore they're struggling. So yeah, take note. Develop your components first, then think about your chassis, perhaps. Right. Sponsorship. This is your primary source of income during a season. 
you get a bit of prize money at the end, your chairman gives you a bit of cash to start, but during the season, this is where you make your money. And of course, with our two excellent marketable drivers, especially the Diva Valdez, and our very high team marketability through hard work and determination of Brian Potter, we have five star sponsors because of the helipad being unlocked, and therefore we can have the best sponsors around, which of course give us the most money. You get sponsors for race bonus, so you get paid out on where you finish in the race or qualify and you get a fixed payment sponsor who pay you regardless so uh, yeah more about those when they crop up but uh, we have great sponsors available to us now these are all the old sponsors we haven't yet got a five star sponsor because i've just literally unlocked them this at the back end of last season so i would look forward to getting some uh, some high level sponsors to help us fund our developments right then so that is an overview of the team the drivers the staff um, and where we've come from and what our goal is for the season our goal is to get promoted we have perf we have sort of level we've lined everything up to coincide with this third season getting the drivers just in time for the third season developing our parts aggressively for the third season that is the goal can we do it that is the question but before we do dive into the game proper um just a little little cheeky look at last season because um i had the three season goal we almost did it in two <laughs> it's 2017 we finished second in the constructors we finished second we were top for nine for eight races out of the ten there's ten races in the european racing season uh, racing series to start with and um we were top of the tree for the first eight got off to a flying start even got a race win and then we got pegged back on the ninth race by Garuda they went eight points ahead and in the last race of the season you could only claw back four points so we actually only finished second but that was an absolute minor miracle because our car wasn't anywhere near as good as the rest of them um, and if we'd have got promoted or finished top, we'd have had a tough decision to make because we would have had to determine whether or not we wanted to go up to the next race, uh, racing series. Um, I don't know if I've, I've, I've explained it or not, but there is a three-tier system. We start in the bottom, you go up to the second tier, which is the Asia Pacific Cup, when you finish top of the tree down here. And then the top tier is the F1 equivalent, the, here called the World Motorsport Championship. There are no um, licenses for this game, so I'm looking for the actual. I'm looking for. Oh, there you go. There. I'm looking for the actual screen here. So, so there's no licenses, but uh, you can tell which teams are which pretty much. So we are in the third tier at the moment. If we get promoted, we go into the Asia Pacific Super Cup, and if we get promoted from this, we go into the World Motorsport Championship. But yeah. Last season, second in the constructors, so close. But more importantly, look who's top of the pile. Look who's the reigning European Racing Series champion. It's none other than Sergio Valdez. Our diva extraordinaire finished as champion. <laughs> Can you believe it? Our second driver was Gomez, who is down here. He finished 15th. He was our first driver, we give him all the best parts, he's a better driver than Gomez. He finished up there, Gomez finished down there. Um, yeah, so we have the current Racing Series champion driving in our team. But as you've seen with the various stats, I think Valdez can have a bit of competition on his hands. Just from his own teammate, let alone anybody else. So it's going to be a very interesting season. Can he retain his championship? Hmm, interesting to find out. Right then, so there's one last thing to take you through in this introductory video, and this might be of interest to even those of you who have played the game before, because as you will know if you have, to keep things spiced up, um, there's a variety of different rules in, in all forms of motorsport, from the safety cars, to the type of tyres you use, to the races in the series, to a variety of, you know, whether you qualify or not, whether you have reverse grids, there's a whole plethora of rules that are different between the series and every season you can vote for a rule change 
I think there's three votes or four. One, two, three, four. No, there's four. Four per season. So you can change four rules that are randomly generated, they're randomly picked um, per season. And what happens is all the team principals either vote for or against a rule change, or you can abstain to, to build up your voting power. So what happens is, if certain rules are passed, it changes the rules for the next season. So the even though we were still in the European Racing Series, this version of the European Racing Series is a little bit different from the previous two versions because some rules have changed. So I'm just going to take you through what rules have changed rather than specifically what rules were there from the start. So the biggest change is the fact that we're now using qualifying base grids. The original series had a reverse grid system which means that the drivers that were at the top of the tree they started at the back. So it was reverse of the championship standings which provided for some very exciting mixed up races. I decided to, I say I decided, I used a lot of my voting power that I had saved up to push this one through. So we now have qualifying and the qualifying is a short qualifying session of only eight minutes giving us a one shot to nail that perfect lap. So that is the big change of this of this series. The second big change is that only the top six drivers now get points. In the original racing series, every driver got a point. So the top driver got 20, all the way down to the bottom driver that got one. I changed it to this. I said I again, because I used my voting power to push this through. And the reason why I pushed these two through was for a bit of nostalgic effect really. When I started watching Formula 1, this was the point scoring system. I wanted to go back to those times just for a bit of fun, a bit of nostalgia. So I introduced qualifying and this old school F1 top 6 point scoring system. Now, this is a double edged sword because I would be nearly 95% confident that if we were using the old rule system of reverse grids and everyone gets a point, we get promoted this season through the use of different, you know, through the use of our strategy and things, we get promoted. Nearly 100% sure. But this qualifying grids and points for the top six rewards the higher teams because they can qualify ahead of the others, get clear track and zoom off into the distance. We're not the best team on the grid. And therefore, when the best cars got stuck in traffic in the reverse grids that was when we picked up decent points and why we finished so high in the championship this season it's going to be a different kettle of fish and uh, yeah if we're not going to be if we're not quick enough compared to the top teams we're going to struggle to get past them so this could be a double-edged rule change picked it for nostalgia and a bit of fun but it's going to make getting promoted a little bit more tricky so they are the big rule changes for this series. There is another couple which are not quite so big. There's an added track of Dubai, European Racing Series, go figure. And we now have three dry weather tyre compounds rather than two for a bit of strategic difference. But other than that, every other rule is as it was when the series started. So you should, if you've played the game before, be used to the other rules. So that is it. That is the introductory video done. The Phoenix Knights racing team is ready to rock and roll and push for promotion, but can they do it? Ruiz Motorsport, Zampelli Engineering are two teams that have come down over the past couple of seasons from the Asia Pacific Super Cup. So they are a class above everybody else. Not only that, but Firebird and Silver are pretty decent teams too. So Phoenix Knights, down in lowly 7th place, are going to have a tough time. But can our drivers, who are the best on the grid of course, the, four, the current champion and the magnificent Sundin, can they rag this car around the track to make up for that difference? 
find out in the next session as we go to the Black Sea for the first race of the season. And for those of you that have played this game before will know it is an absolute crapshoot with cars blowing up left, right and centre. <laughs> so until the next session, in a couple of days time when we will start the game proper, see you soon.